semi-finals. Were, it, were Pakistan to win tomorrow, India would be out, so that's incentive enough for them. And as far as today was concerned, well, victory for South Africa would take them through, while a Kiwi triumph would put them in pole position to qualify. No change for the South Africans, the same 11 who beat Pakistan, but their most pressing concern has been a relative failure by their top order, just three 50s between them so far. Klusner not out in his last nine one-day internationals, scoring 113, 35, 13, 35, 12, 52, 48, 52 and 46, which as you've just worked out is a total of 396. While well, Roger Toos has been the key man with the bat for New Zealand, his home ground for many years was Warwickshire, when constantly overlooked by England, and then he emigrated. Like South Africa, their top order has been short of runstone. Nathan Astle with just 42 in six matches to date. Well, Hansi Cronier won the toss for the South Africans and decided to bat, and will join it in the sixth over. Dion Nash is bowling to Gary Kirsten, and our commentary team is Chris Broad, Colin Croft, Jeremy Coney, Barry Richards, and Jack Bannister. It's 12 without loss. Shot of authority from Gary Kirsten just drifting into the pads. Dion Nash and Kirsten deciding to go over the top, picked it up quite beautifully, just hit it with the swing, chipped it over mid wicket. Through again, suddenly it's all clicking into place for Gary Kirsten. Second fall there over for him. Oh, fielded. Chris Harris at a backward point. Well, he's either got a very big toe or he needs to rearrange his sock. Just poking out the end of his boot. A lovely shot, and again, a good bit of fielding by Harris. Well, that's twice uh, in two overs, he's pulled off uh, very good stops. But Chris Harris has become invaluable to New Zealand immediately this morning, again, saving two runs at least, and the return, brilliant. A slower ball, and uh, Gary Kirsten picked it quite beautifully. So pick the gap. Oh, good running here. It could be close. Oh, Herschel Gibbs is uh, very quick, but Jeff Allett had a start on him with the follow-through. Unfortunately for Allett, he missed the stumps. But Jeff Allett was already running when Herschel Gibbs shouted yes. Gary Kirsten is not sure, but he reacts. And I think that you will see that Allett gets to the ball before, and that would have been out had he hit it directly. Chris Cairns from the city end. Beautiful shot. Herschel Gibbs, not quite to the pitch of the ball. It wasn't really a half volley, but he hit through the line and it raced to the boundary. in the air but perfectly placed oh, well the lesser pace of Gavin Larson almost uh, bringing the downfall of Gary Kirsten there yes. so 50 up for South Africa it's come in the 14th over Edged and just short. Stephen Fleming, uh, the New Zealand captain, is in there. And it was a genuine edge. Yes. Oh, beautiful shots. Lovely timing. 
one on the tip of his toes and just punched the ball away through the offside. So plenty of batting to come. Jack Callas, who's been in fine form in this competition, Daryl Cullinan, Hansi Cronje, John T. Road, Sean Pollock, all the well-known names to English viewers. Well, that's an interesting shot. It was an attempted sweep. Premeditated, I feel. And uh, Gary Kirsten just getting a top edge, which very nearly went up into his face, but it was over the keeper's head. And uh, four runs. And up and over the top, Gary Kirsten. With mixes and into the boundary. Well, he certainly connected well with that one. Yeah. Unlucky. We could have been lucky if that had hit. This stolen overthrow could have been fatal. That's why it was taken. But it was a late takeoff and a hit here. Well, who knows? Larson to Kirsten. Well, it was nicely played, but really he was given the line to do it from because with uh, four in the ring offside, the last thing he wanted was to go leg side, and it's cost him four. Last five overs for 31 runs. Well, it's not that the bowling's been bad, it's just the singles on offering. Fifth New Zealand bowler tried, Chris Harris. Again, the sweep. This was from uh, around about middle and off off, so took a bit of a risk. some pad there, but um, we thought it was before that. Brings the 100 up, and it's only the second 100 opening partnership in this tournament, and the other one also to South Africa, and that was against England. Well, it does the slip the pad first. Hits the top of the pad. Fifty for Kirsten. First one of the tournament. Close to Herschel Gibbs, and this a full toss, and Gibbs uh, making it quite comfortably out onto the offside. He'll pick two runs up here. And uh, this opening partnership is the highest of the competition so far, beating the 111. South Africa made against England at the Oval. Nash to Gibbs, and beautifully struck. Well, that was four as soon as it left the bat. And Marson was the fielder out at uh, point, and it brings up Herschel Gibbs, 50. song uh, with this next one as well short from Dion Nash and Gibbs into a very good position pulling it away over mid-wicket he really is in good touch very ordinary bowling try to bowl a slower delivery there roll the fingers around at Dion Nash no control, Herschel Gibbs easily put that one away so successive fours and the scoring rate really is accelerating now Four more. The third in a row. And really, Dion Nash doesn't know where to go for Herschel Gibbs at this moment. They've all been genuine shots and they've all been put away quite superbly. Very good scoring rate. Starting to accelerate. If you apply the equation of doubling it after 30, South Africa on for 280. 
That's all to give. Down the wicket, and uh, this might well have just come off pad. But it's, uh, well, that's a wonderful bit of fielding by Chris Cairns down in the boundary. Lev Wise has been signalled. Terrific piece of fielding. Oh, that's good uh, running between the wickets. Pressure was put on Chris Cairns by Herschel Gibbs, running the single at the first run quickly. And Cairns fumbled, which allowed the second. Yes, just took his eye off it for a minute and gave Herschel Gibbs, who's very quick between the wickets, to get back. Mind you, it would have been interesting if he'd hit, I think he was in. And uh, a reverse uh, sweep brings up the 150 for South Africa. Well, I've seen some reverse sweeps in my time, but uh, that's a most unusual shot. Never a dull moment. We've got warmer invention. The reverse sweep. Plenty of time. The uh, bowling of Chris Harris, very, very medium pace. And the switch of the hands, and completely the other way. And he's got away with it, not straight off the middle. Give the bowler something to think about that. Well, not much is going right for New Zealand at the moment. A bottom edge, which could have gone anywhere. They've kept control of the boundaries. There's only been 11 fours hit so far. Six of the innings, and uh, Kirsten really announced himself there. He's had more of the strike, but he's also used it well. None better than with that shot. Well, just in the slot here, I could have gotten hold of it very well, but it was a little bit square that perhaps he expected, but maximum nonetheless. Looking for two. Gibbs is quick. <laughs> South Africa's leading one day international run scorers and Gary's Kirsten just second to Hansi Kronje. for Gibbs it's his sixth Larson from the city end to Gibbs careless absolutely careless because there is no possible chance of a run out all he's done is uh, show the strength of his arm at the cost of a run and he knows it Sweep and there he's out. Well, Astor's earned that. If only by virtue of the two dot balls that started it all off. And uh, finally, success for New Zealand with Gary Kirsten having played a splendid innings and set up a great launching pad going out to this sort of sweep shot. And he's gone for 82 and 176 for one in the 37th. Wow, what do we do with this guy? 210 runs already. And obvious reason that he must accelerate things. Last time he was out was uh, caught by Roger Twos off the bowling of Jeff Allis. And that was uh, over four months ago since set up an all-time record in one-day internationals soon off the mark because these are short so 
Well, Lance Kilsner already has his eye in. This is his second delivery. A straight drive. Probably didn't hit it as hard as he wanted. Nathan Nasser might have just gotten a hand, a hand to it, but it ends up as four. Well, that's a wonderful hit. And it's six. All hand and eye coordination, and that is the real strength of Horseshoe Gibbs. Well, Gavin Larson has not done very much wrong here, but Herschel Gibbs just steps into it, a flick of the wrist, timing perfect, and it's deposited over square leg. We saw it all tackled with Marin Khan, but nothing can go on forever. And uh, as he went, the other batting destroyer in this tournament, so has Lance Klusner. Gone for just one scoring shot for four, bowled by Larson, and now 187 for two in the 38th. And nothing lasts forever. Moving from number seven, eight to number three did not work for Lance Klusner. A big gate between bat and pad, and Gavin Larson gets some success. He moves the top of the off stump and the off bail. Lance Klusner is bowled. 187 for two. New batsman is Jack Callis. Ah! Suddenly it's all starting to happen and uh, you can hesitate to say that this is a South African innings that could go wrong because it won't. But nevertheless, they're looking for somewhere near 300 and... Uh, I think like a couple of wickets to slow things down, perk up the field inside. So Harris from the pavilion end to Callis. there, erring in length. It's question three. Comes up for 200 and takes Callis into double figures. Well, we haven't seen too much indifferent bounce from this pitch, but that one certainly didn't bounce very much. A bold right in the block hole. There's not much any batsman can do with uh, a delivery such as that. South Africa just past the 200. And Jack Cullis climbing into Chris Harris here. Deciding the slot sweep is the shot to the lack of pace of uh, Chris Harris. And he connected very well. Well, bat speed here, look at the advance for a start, the charge of the light brigade, and then that's why it's so far in front of square, it's a lack of pace, and also about off stump. Hasn't really connected it. Well, this is up in the air, this is coming towards the country box here. And six runs. And two deliveries by Chris Harris in this over, 1-4, one 1-6. Well, co-commentator Broad has gone a rather sallow colour here as this comes towards us. This is a much better connection from Callis. Nice, eight. Well, that's well stopped, but it could provide South Africa with two runs, and indeed does. The way between the wickets has been excellent today by the South African batsman. Harris to Callis, and again he's gone for a big one, and this really is a big one. It's uh, hit the top of the comedy box and has bounced out the ground. So he's just had a sighter, and, and he's made it count. Well, this is a little unusual. I would have thought that Callis would have been the anchor man, and it would be up to Herschel Gibbs, who certainly, while he's getting close to 100, to keep the, the fours ticking over. But it's Jacques Callis there, you can see all the even numbers. I'll look after this end. 
you're taking it nicely at the other end. Nice, Harry. So, just the 19 runs off uh, that Chris Harris over. with 19 and he deserves the uh, pats on the back that his teammates have given him well and what a one to get to they're just linked and Gibbs unable to get down on that but Allen just getting the legs right Oh, Cullinan is the uh, batsman coming into the crease. Just six overs remaining. Cairns to Cullinan. Oh, no real time to play himself in there, Daryl Cullinan. Having a swish at the first ball. and a chance and well caught by Chris Cairns a very good slow delivery that he has in his repertoire has fooled Darrell Cullinan and it just locked up tantalisingly in front of Chris Cairns and a very good catch well deceived by pace or lack of it early on in his innings Cullinan's just pushed forward a little too far and Cairns seeing it was tantalising Taking a good catch, caught and bowled, landing a little heavily on the strip beside him. Pleased with that. Cullen out for naught, 2 2 9 for 4. Nancy Cronier, the South African captain. Well, Cronier is uh, not bothering playing himself in. A couple of paces down the pitch, and he's just deposited the ball, one bounce for 4. to Cronier and again down the wicket again over extra cover and ultimately the same result four more to the South African total <laughs> and again uh, Cronier backing away they'll look for two and uh, they'll make it quite comfortably 250 up for South Africa, the loss of four wickets. It's been a, a very entertaining in inning so far. Okay, no. it's Cronje, and he's gone for this. It's a no ball, and it's gone into the crowd for six. So an expensive uh, mess by Chris Cairns. From the checking it's a no ball. This is a bit of cricket vandalism really. Overstepping and having that departing near the lampshades. Cairns to Cronio is short and it's got the same treatment. Six more. Two great shots from Hansi Konya. Not great thinking from Chris Cairns. Should have kept the ball up in the block hole. One thing you can't do is drag it down short. Look, that's given Konya the time to swing the arms freely. Well, Jack Callis is getting in on the act here now. He's adding to the total. It's a wonderful six, probably the biggest of the over. And the South African supporters are loving it. That man's not. 24 runs off this Chris Cairns over. Well, here's the third six. It just shows you the just a little bit shorter in length, a wee bit wayward, and that's the response at this time of the innings. That's well back. Well, 
last three overs. 36 runs to the South African cause. Sikranya sees the funny side of it. He had to go for it. And they really have to try and get as many runs as they can here, South Africa. And there's a good bit of fielding. Not long boundary straight here. Nash has got in quickly. You could hear the cry of shoot from the bowler. And he's got a direct hit on the short. Nash was in quickly and throwing on the run. A good view of three stumps. John C. Rhodes has just come in. He is very fast. But the throw into Callis's end. And Jack Callis showing a turn of speed as well. He makes 50. And again, it's been a wonderful knock from Jack Callis with some uh, big hitting. So, South Africa's uh, last ball. Again, John T. Rhodes is very, very quick down to the striker's end. He's back for two. The throws come to Jack Callis's end, but he's home. And the innings has finished. 287 for five, South Africa, off their full 50 overs. And the crowd standing to their feet to applaud. Good entertainment here by the South African batsmen. Well, a real cameo innings from Callis at the end, just what you need in a one-day match. His 53 off 36 balls, 93 off the last 10 overs. Kirsten and Gibbs opening stand the biggest of the competition so far. And if you took the 9-1 to one about Gavin Larson getting Lance Klusner out, well, you're counting your money now. Just the one wicket for Allop, but an important one. He's now the leading wicket-taker in all World Cups. And Chris Cairns, seen by many as one of the Kiwis' main figures before the tournament, taking a fearful hammering there, conceding 8 and over. Into the pitcher. This is just a warmer upper. This is just a second ball of this innings. Immediately on spot. He's safe to runs. Pollock to Horn. This is how Horn's decided to play. Flashing shot. Pollock to Horn. Good job. Beautifully timed. Next to place of Pollock, bringing that ball nicely onto the bat. Yep. Again, nicely timed. This is how Horn started off against Zimbabwe. It's his third four. Callis to Astor. Huge shot then the left side. Astor's not interested, nor Ian Robinson. South Africa absolutely astonished. There's a very big noise here. And a big shout from the South Africans, but I think you will see from that that the ball just clipped the batsman's thigh. I don't think this actually hit the glove at all. It's second slip, beautiful delivery from Callis. He's been looking to pitch that away swing in the right place. He's got it, and that's the end of Horn. And New Zealand now 20 for one, and we're in the sixth over. Matthew Horn actually tries to keep this ball down, but Sean Pollock takes a very comfortable catch to his left. He celebrates. Matthew Horn would be a little bit disappointed that he's gone for 12. New Zealand at 20 for one. Batsman Craig McMillan. Oh, that must be out or close, close to it, but no. Vinkert says no. Pollock bowls from so close to the stumps, almost in line from wicket to wicket. Sean Pollock is very close here, but this ball might even have cut a little bit too much. 
you could see the off stump there, so my chance of been missing leg might even have been a little bit too high. Pai Venkat says no. Callis to McMillan. Took his chances. Certainly was always going for two. Well, the first look at this suggests that it might just be out. It is going to be close. King okay, it off to keep his hand down. Wow, that's a really good That seemed like just be marginally in. The return comes back from Lance Klusner, and I think he's just made it. It's a really shot, it really was. He's in the slot, it was going to go. Craig McMillan, the batsman. Yes! He's got this one away, or has he? Well, a fumble from Jonty Rhodes. You don't see that every day. And immediately he apologises to the rest of the South African team because there could easily have been a run out there. He's down quickly but just lets the ball go. And there was certain hesitate, hesitation between the batsmen. lose their second wicket. Estel, I think he may have just played away from himself. No, not too bad actually. It's just been a ball that's left him slightly and uh, Cullinan's good first slip stayed down and taken it very comfortably. So Estel departs. Nine, New Zealand two for 34 and in trouble. So some work required now by New Zealand and uh, New Zealand's captain Stephen Fleming has come to the crease. And, uh, the world's fastest uh, strike bowler coming on, Alan Donald. Well, uh, strangely first ball, Fleming has got it away. The direction not quite right from Alan Donald and it's four runs to the New Zealand total. Well, it's just a little bit leg side from Alan Donald and uh, just allowing Fleming to just roll the wrists. Good timing and it's very quick across the square here. You get good value for runs. Steve Elworthy is the bowler from the pavilion end. Oh, lovely shot. Well, that was really a stand and deliver type shot. It wasn't a true hard volley but just a fraction of width. Well, the South Africans are celebrating, but umpire Venkat has given a no-ball for height, I believe. It went over shoulder high, and immediately it went up over shoulder high. Umpire Venkat put his arm out. Well, here it is, yes. Well, it's gloved in, and uh, an athletic take by Boucher. But Venkat was quick to assure the South Africans that's... That's a no ball. Donald to McMillan. There's a man back now after 15 overs. So a good shot, but only one run. 50 for New Zealand. And a loss of two wickets. And it's come at a relatively slow pace. City end, but it's still four. Third four for Stephen Fleming. Got it. Yeah. Sort of desperation shots now. New Zealand have got to try. It's five in the ring, no slip. Elworthy to Fleming. 
That's a better shot. Beautifully timed, he waited for that one. Worthy to McMillan. Oh, Rhodes got a hand to it. He's done some spectacular things in his career, and that was nearly one more. He just needed another six inches of height. John T. Rhodes. Brilliant, it would have been absolutely brilliant. Just touched it. Faced 43 balls, only for 12 runs before that one. Backing up. And that's pretty good bowling from Steve Elworthy. He's had McMillan on the back foot, and that's been intentional. This one's pitched a little further up, trying to induce the drive. McMillan's got enough bat on it to get it over the top. And Donald to Fleming. <laughs> that was desperation time. It was pitched up. Fifth floor for Stephen Fleming. You can see there in Manhattan, New Zealand, they needed a few more skyscrapers, I would have thought. South Africa had a few nice big ones at the end of the innings. Oh, catch! Well, found the gap on the onside. And it's a much needed boundary. Certainly took a risk in playing that shot. That's the sort of risks that they have to take at this stage. And there were shouts of catch it here, but the only person who might have caught this would be umpire Venkat standing a square leg. Very well played. Oh. Craig McMillan. Oh, it's in the air. And Herschel Gibbs takes a comfortable catch. Nancy Cronya in his first over picks up the wicket of Craig McMillan. And that is the third New Zealand wicket to fall. Just 93 on the board. So they really are struggling. Well, it might have been a slow ball here. Craig McMillan again trying to hit the ball over mid-wicket, this time it goes straight up very long time to come down to Herschel Gibbs but look at that nonchalant well, this match has uh, any number of players who know this ground well Alan Donald and Sean Pollock from South Africa have played for Warwickshire in Candy Championship cricket Roger Twos also and he's now at the crease because of this was uh, his off cutter and it really did bite into the pitch and uh, deviate considerably <coughs> but because Lance Kluzer is a fast bowler this is an off cutter that more was like an off break Stephen Fleming on strike and a hit straight back past the bowler hit very hard as well and well how unlucky Alan Donald Beautifully stopped, but it just went out of his grasp and onto the boundary rope. 100 up for New Zealand for the loss of three wickets. On the international run scores for New Zealand. Martin Crow, 4,704. Good batsman in that lineup. <laughs> Fleming in the air and taken by Sean Pollock at mid on. Stephen Fleming is the man gone, New Zealand's captain, trying to hit out. He's been frustrated for some considerable time. He's now been caught by Pollock off Cronier for 42. Well, Stephen Fleming might have been beaten here from the lack of pace and the shortness of the delivery. He tries to hit over the top, just succeeds in giving John Pollock a very easy catch. New Zealand 107 for four. Well, here's a man who can hit some lusty blows. 
New Zealand need them. Chris Cairns is the new batsman. Oh, one captain to another. And it's the South African captain who comes off the better. Because Sean Pollock got in the way of that attempted lofted on drive by Stephen Fleming. Ball up in the air, Roger Twos. And is that going to go all the way? It's very close. In fact, it's not close at all. It's six. A very clean strike. Cairns is up and over, he's connected, there's no one back, it's four. <coughs> well, Roger Two's getting an inside edge and uh, getting to the boundary, this was the intention in the first place, but not exactly where he wanted it to go. Well, Spurs is going to be upset at this. Plan is obvious for Roger Tools. Inside edge, you take it them however they come. Just missing the leg stump, down to the boundary for four. Oh, Tools has got hold of this one. This is exactly where he wanted it to go. Over deep at wicket. Just a couple of ounces. Quite a good start to this over for New Zealand. That's a big one. That's what Cairns and New Zealand won. Clues not making the mistake on this pitch of pitching short. It's uh, as often being on the giving end of an onslaught that Cairns is now trying to mount. Well, Chris Cairns have been trying to do this for a while. This one he connects. Short of a length from Lance Klusner, dispatched over mid-wicket. It's still going when it passes the boundary. Bowed him. Fuller length, angling back in slightly, and Cairns goes. The brave effort from him, but uh, of course it's almost lost. He's gone for 17 of only 15 balls, 1-6-1-4, 144 for 5. Good comeback from Lance Klusner. Kept his uh, wits about him. Just a little bit of in movement. He bowls from wide of the crease. Chris Cairns looking for that mid wicket boundary again. And that's a good piece of bowling from Lance Klusner. Real pressure for New Zealand. Chris Cairns there had a lot to do. And Klusner has won the battle. New batsman Adam Perori. A good attacking batsman, but uh, like anybody, he needs time to settle in, and there isn't much of that in this innings now. A lack of pace on that. Ferrari's taking on for two. The that was always going to be tight. He's out here when he went to put the bat in to run it, it actually stuck in the ground just momentarily. And I don't think he got his bat over the line. This will be very interesting indeed. Well done. And for he goes, a couple of feet short. New Zealand now on the slide at 148 for six. New batsman Chris Harris. Elworthy to Harris. It's the 150 up.
Elworthy to twos. Well, flat batted in. And may well have broken his bat. It's two bats for Roger Twos. I'm not surprised he's breaking them. This is a terrific shot. Real flat bat. Straight over mid on. The man is very wide, but that has hit so well, he would have had no chance of cutting it off. Oh, no. Twos has got to go here. That must be out. And they've gone for a second one. A direct hit, and there was hesitation from Twos in the first place. Venkat's refer. I think the divers just saved him, but it's going to be an awfully close, and this is a good piece of fielding. Herschel Gibbs. Does he get the bat across the line in time? Just. Two runs a result. Clues in the bowling from the pavilion end to twos. Should be out. Hansi Kwan here takes the catch. It's the seventh one down for New Zealand. Roger Two's here looking to go over the top again. He's got it, uh, plenty of elevation. Not enough length. Just drops nicely into Hansi Cronier's hands. Saw from and all. So Lance Klusner strikes again. Roger Two's 35 and 40. He just had too much to do. New Zealand 171 for seven. The batsman is down Nash. And this is a big shot. Leon Nash down the whip, the pitch a couple of paces over the top. Slower ball from Cronje. Nash not quite there but hits through the line. Slower delivery, and the shot are on the ground. Dion Nash uh, had no chance really of uh, hitting that one to the boundary. Clever bit of bowling from Sean Pollock. So the eighth New Zealand wicket falls. 194 on the board. Well, this is deceptive, isn't it? He just rolled the fingers across, and you can see Nash should be completely deceived. And there you are, there's the pace. And the new batsman is Gavin Larson. The single brings up the 200 for New Zealand. So last ball, Donald to Gavin Larson, and edged away. And is it going to the boundary? It has. It's gone to the boundary, but it doesn't really make a great deal of difference. South Africa have won the game comfortably by 74 runs, and it's been a very good performance by Hansi Kronje and his team. Takes them now to six points in the group, and they have qualified for the semi-finals. We're always chasing the game after that slowish start, and the New Zealanders really look like being in a position to make an assault on that target. Fleming was the top scorer with 42, but only his partnership with McMillan topped the half-century mark. And there were two wickets for the ubiquitous Klusner. He'll get you with the ball if he doesn't hit you with the bat. Callis was difficult to get away, and his two early strikes meant the South Africans were always in control. And not surprisingly, it was he who took the Man of the Match award. Hansi, uh, many congratulations, a thoroughly professional victory today. Yeah, very happy today, the guys all um, put it together, you know, it was important for us to get off to a good start and uh, for Gibbs and Kirsten played particularly well and set a good, good base there for the guys to work on, so very happy with the batting today. This means a must-win situation for you now against uh, India on Saturday. Yeah, it is, and uh, oh, it's a nice place to be in. You can lose a game, still have an opportunity to get through. So, uh, yeah, it's a big ask, but we've uh, just got to get that batting going to, uh, to challenge. Will you have difficulty lifting your guys for that game? No, because it's a one-off, and uh, it's a must-win. It's very easy to get up for. 
any individuals you thought did themselves justice today? Jeff Allett probably carried on this form. Um, it's very hard to, to sort of pick out individuals that did their job when we got pretty well outplayed. But um, no, we, we were just outclassed today and, and no one was really responsible for it. But it was a tough day at the office. Well, you're definitely in the semi-finals now. Congratulations on that. Uh, will you be taking your foot off the throttle against Australia? You've got one or two injury worries. Yeah, we'll just see, um, you know, how important Sunday's game is. We'll uh, have a look on Friday and Saturday how things go and then have a look at that game. It's going to be pretty important for Australia. We'll see how we go here. Yeah. We got off to a fantastic start and when the openers do get off to a good start like that, the guys down the order can afford to come out and play a few shots and, you know, if it's your day, then uh, you can do quite well. And you took the new ball once again for South Africa and picked up those important wickets. Yeah, I think it was early, uh, important that we got a few early wickets and fortunate enough to find one or two edges. Um, you know, one of those days where things sort of went my way.